You are listening to an entertainment program put together by a company called Financial Ineptitude. Anything said on this show is not an endorsement or professional advice. Would you really want to tell a court of law you were suing us because you thought taking financial advice from two idiots on a podcast put out by Financial Ineptitude was a good idea? Really? Clown hats on your face. Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to the China Shop. We are here back at it again. I'm shopkeeper Dan. With a, with me as always is Kyle, creator of financialneptitude.com. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm uh, doing all right. Doing okay. Yeah, yeah. Having just watched your most recent chess game against an opponent that wasn't me, I, I, I bet you're doing just <laughs> No, having watched my portfolio dropped 10%. Oh, yeah, it's a weird day, right? I thought I thought Powell was dovish. Like, what what would a hawk do in this scenario? Like, good lord! <laughs> anyway, that's another episode. We're, <laughs> we're hand trucking barrels of cash out back and burning them. <laughs> you might as well, Ben. We'll get that inflation. Hey, everything I've been saying to make you guys feel good—it's all been a lie. <laughs> it's all been a lie. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Shit. All right, it's not transitory. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> Current events, which won't be current by the time people are, a lot of people are listening to this. Yeah, yeah, way to be on the ball. I know, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, we're here uh, doing kind of a... What have we learned? Personal Kyle Dan, what have we learned this year? Now that it's, uh, we're recording this December 1st, we've had 11 months of madness. 11 months of madness. We've been kind of doing this for, I don't know, we've been doing this for a little longer than that. When did we actually start? It was like... Back before the pandemic, we, st- like we really started, started last serious. Yeah. Well, we've been doing it longer than a year, but I mean like this past 11 months, we started yeah, yeah, yeah. January 1st. I really look at things uh, like two different ways. We've got like, you know, Nicholas Darvis book, like enthusiasm starting yeah. out by the rips and sometimes lose and sometimes win. And uh, the day we met George Papazov and got access yeah. to his trade pro courses as being like the, that was the day, like the real learning seems like it started. Yeah, and you know, do you remember I had that uh, that that course, that investing course? I don't know if I sent it to you or not. Uh, you might have shared uh, it with me. I think you told me about it, but never never looked at it, I don't think. I recently found it, and I pulled up the section on technical analysis. Yeah. Now, I, I watched that DVD course maybe eight years ago, mm-hmm. and it did not click like the presentation of it was poor okay because it's all all of the, the technical analysis information is in there all the stuff we learned at trade pro it's it's not you know not like trade pro invented technical analysis but george as a teacher and his enthusiasm mm-hmm. is really what makes it so worthwhile i mean it's just he makes it so much easier to comprehend yeah and he makes it uh more than just looking at a stock chart, you know, you describe it as a battle, your battle between the sellers and the buyers and, and you're watching the events unfold. And it's almost like watching like a history channel special watching you, like the right? the landing of Normandy, like, Oh, Oh, are they going to make it? Are they going to push? They got to push here. <laughs> you got, you're right. Yeah. Oh, oh, they're pushing back over there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, look out, that, look out. That make, yeah, definitely makes it more personable and a lot easier to, to follow along. Like, yeah, he does a great job of, of using good analogies and breaking it down in terms that anybody can understand. But yeah. this is not necessarily a, you know, hour long <laughs> uh, infomercial for Trade Pro Academy. Kiss, <laughs> we just kiss, kiss, to- kiss George's ass. Yeah. No, no. Uh, but that's, it's been such a big part of our, our growth this year mm-hmm. was facilitated with George. So got to We got to lead off mentioning it, you know, and thanking him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks, George. If you're listening, <laughs> you, you, I know you're not. You, you're too busy. Sometimes he does. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's let's uh, let's that's let's true. just jump in then. Let's uh, let's talk about some of the top lessons that we've learned. Well, top lesson I learned is that uh, you can anticipate price targets. That's yes, yeah. When we first started this thing. I was always thinking like uh, you can't predict, so just buy and hold is like the best long term plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Likewise. I was just at a brunch with Jen and uh the conversation, you know, came up and Jen's like, Well, you should probably talk to Dan if you're talking crypto and stock trading. Mm-hmm. And there were three or four people there and we were all talking and the the prevalent thing that all of them carried with them is, Well, you can't 
you can't predict predict what the what it's going to do. All you can do is dollar cost average. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you kind of can if you got the volume by price and you understand what the stock chart is telling you. Um, I didn't get into too much to, to candlesticks or anything because I didn't right. want to turn brunch into <laughs> Dan, <laughs> Dan's stock lessons. Let me pull out the old ch chalkboard here you and we'll make some charts now. And start drawing lines and showing them how trend analysis works. <laughs> <laughs> well, with one lady, I did pull out yep. trading view and I was like, let's look at this crypto. Let me show you the volume. The, you know, volume by price. But it really struck me um, because two of the people were longtime investors, mm -hmm. right? That were putting time into it. And to f they, 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 they were being genuine and open about it. And, and it really made me realize in my head, like, wow, Dan, you've come so far because here you are sitting here like, well, come on. Yeah, there, there's, there's a great way to, to tell <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> market structure, volume by price. Come on technical analysis and then the, the well, there's two keys to that too right one is that it's nothing's 100 percent. nothing there is still an element of you know chaos whenever you're dealing with it like mm -hmm. the other one is that it takes a lot of time a lot of screen time in order to start being able to see those things and be able to act on them properly and that's something that we're yes. still in the process of of getting to the i think it was malcolm gladwell said to master anything you need to put ten thousand hours of practice in mm-hmm so George starting in like 2001 or whenever he started, he's got more than 10,000 hours. You know, yep. he's, he's a master. He can look at a chart. I don't have 10,000 hours. I, you know, I get one to two, maybe three hours of screen time on a heavy day, four if I'm really digging in trying to scroll through charts. Well, you should be getting pretty close to it, though. I, you know, I, I well, that, that's just it. That's what, one of the things I realized at the brunch was like, wow, I've put enough screen time with these charts where I don't feel like they're a mystery anymore. Right. I'm not a master, but but there's no nothing mysterious about it. Right. But yeah, screen time. You and and it can't be just just sitting and watching. You have to have some things you're watching for. You have to have that base knowledge bef before you sit down and watch the charts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, confirmation is key, right? But but once you're there, it's it's it all looks so obvious, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> then you can t you can see it in our chart analysis. Like we started incorporating that into the regular show, mm -hmm. where we'll look at you know four four or five stocks I think in a given week that we're we're watching for something to happen in the next four weeks. Uh, going back and reviewing those, and like our hit rate is is phenomenal right now. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. I would think so. Now, if we were only just doing it with our own money, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It seems like I always, I always pick one out of, like, the five, and it's always the wrong one. <laughs> oh, oh, same here. Same here. It's all real estate. Right. And I, and I, always, I always buy the, <laughs> the one that ends up getting rezoned. Yeah. Ah, well, Murphy, he's a bitch. Right. What I always end up doing is, is fucking trying to trade the options, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when when we were, we were finding stocks that we're looking at, but what's actually more successful in my own personal life is the buy the dip strategy. Just buying stock uh, with with the shares of the stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and and doing so in a shorter or so I should say a longer time frame mm -hmm. than options than I tend to do with options uh, always ends up helping me more, more than hurting me. Well, the problem with options is that you have to get the timing and the direction right. Like that, that timing aspect of it is what really throws a wrench into things. And when you're yeah. doing it with shares, shares it's are so a lot much more easier. forgiving. Yeah, yeah, but they're also boring, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, I've been playing with the idea of of starting a Darvis box list just for buying the dip. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, Darvis box is nothing really more than just price action, right? You're just looking for a consolidation on something that's showing strength and then looking for volume to increase. Right. When I say Darvis box, all I mean, that's shorthand for stock at an all-time high that's in a range, right? It's just consolidating at its all-time yeah. high. That's that's what a Darvis box, that's what he looked for. Like, he didn't even care about volume. Think of think of that. Well, he did. I think he did at the... Oh, okay. Maybe not. I don't remember. I have to go back and look at the book. No, he... I thought he always wanted to see an increase of volume and then break the box no he he just he just followed price action his, his he's like price is the only indicator you need wow that was his thing well that'll bring me to my top lesson i think that i've learned this last year and that revolves all around discipline like s there's so many different strategies that you can try and follow and there's so many different ones that can work the 
thing that separates you from being profitable and not, though, is just how well you follow that plan. Mm-hmm. And so much of this game is about being disciplined. And I finally just had a eureka moment this last, uh, I think, week. Maybe it was this weekend when I was thinking yep. about futures. And you know, keep hearing people talk about like mental capital. Like, uh, I don't have the capital, the mental capital, the capacity to be able to trade for more than a couple hours a day. And I was like, I, you know, for a while, like, that never clicked in my head, like, what they were talking about. Like, I always feel still alert. And when I'm watching the charts for, you know, six hours, take a little break here and there. Where I start to lack, though, is the discipline. Like, I don't have the discipline to follow my plan or to wait for, you know, prime opportunities. Like, I start getting loosey-goosey with my entries just to try to, you know, to do stuff. And I think that's what they mean when they talk about their mental capital. It's, it's all about having the discipline to stay focused and not take, you know, extra risk when you don't need to. Wait for those, you know, primo entries. Right. Wait, wait. Wait for the ones that just look so good, they're irresistible. And if I would say anybody that's struggling with, with that discipline, like one of the biggest things that I think helped me, and I know it, I don't want to speak for you, but I'm assuming it helped you too, was taking that 21-day mm-hmm. challenge of just sitting and watching. Yep. Like not trying to think of any entries, not trying to, to plan any trades, just, just observing the markets. Because you're, what you're going to find is during that 21 days, there's opportunities every day. And then it suddenly doesn't seem to matter so much when you miss one. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It takes a lot of the, the I have to trade now out of it, which leads to the bad timing. Right. Yep. And then that starts to we miss a trade. Then you start acting because you're missing out. You're trying to make up for those perceived, you know, missed profits. You think of those as a loss in your head and then you're chasing that, trying to get that back, even though you never actually had it. You're right. If you spend, you spend, uh, you know, three weeks just watching the markets, I promise you'll have a much better headspace when it comes to, to that. You won't, you won't be missing out nearly as much. You'll just be looking for the next one. But before you start watching, you got to have a foundation to know what you're watching. Got to have that basic foundation. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I'm sure there are many people out there that could just watch and then it just clicks of their own accord. But it, I'm the kind of person where you need to tell me what I'm watching for. That would help. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you're watching for in this scenario, I'll go ahead and just break it down for anybody who's considering doing this type of challenge. Uh, like learn how to plot your, lo- uh, your levels where you're looking at like weekly charts and zooming in from the weekly to the daily to the hourly. You're drawing your levels of supports, horizontal lines that intersect like three or more price points, like peaks or, or troughs. Like those are, are areas of interest. Those are areas of supports and resistance. Mm-hmm. And then what you're doing for that 21 day challenge is you're watching for when the price approaches those, how it reacts. When it breaks through, when it fails to break through, when it fails at a level, when it when it falls through, you're watching to see if it comes back. Does it come back and retest it before continuation? Or what's different between that and a head fake where it kind of pops its head above and then fails? Just trying to, to see how everything reacts. The more time you spend in front of the screen watching these things, the more you'll have in your toolbox when it comes to try to trade them. Yeah. It's human psychology, even if they're AI bots trading the the securities, it's still human psychology that's guiding it all. And that produces repetitions Mm -hmm. of patterns and and gives you the ability to find high probability trades. No such thing as a sure thing Mm -hmm. without insider trading, but, uh, you know, you can definitely... No, if you can get a 60% edge, uh, and then if you do well with managing your risk, putting your stop losses where they should be, 60% is more than enough to be able to do this for a full-time job. Yeah. Sure, you can even do it with, you know, 30 to 40% if you're, uh, depending on how you're taking profit. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that, uh, that it's the, there's always going to be another better trade. That's true if it's futures, options, or better trade. There's always going to be another trade. Uh, it's true. Futures, options, and stocks. Yes. Like you sit and you watch them. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're day trading or or long term investing. Like, wait for your setup. Like, form the plan. I always, when I find myself in the woods, it's because I'm trying to play it loose from the hip. I know. I know. I was griping today in futures because I was like, ah, the plan failed me. Well, you know what? That's not the typical case. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> and I had plenty of opportunities to follow the plan and and do it right. And, you know, it was only later in the day after after things had changed, you know, like you get an hour and a half into the trading day. Well, yeah, you've got to revise your plan. You have to. But but the point but the point uh, right. uh, that I'm trying to make is, is like you should be it's better to be if you're trading with a plan, even if you're revising it, you can improve because you know what you're doing when, when you're trying to do it by the hip or just it feels right with your gut. 
Like if you did it wrong, like how are you going to get that? How are you going to try and improve that? Yeah. And if you're trading with the plan, then you at least have something to go back and analyze if the plan fails. Let the plan fail or succeed on its own merits. At least then you get some data. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that data should be able to inform your next plan. Uh-huh. Um, oh, I wrote, I wrote a thing down. Um, it was... Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll come back to that one. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll stick to stick this one. Uh, technical analysis uh, is what appeals most to me for making a plan. Like, like when I was growing up mm -hmm. and I would think in my head, like, I wish I could... I wish I knew how to play the stock market. Like, I guess what I was always wishing for was, I wish I knew technical analysis. Uh, that does not mean that it's the only <laughs> way to do it. Uh, fundamental analysis right. is amazing too. It's just different work. They're both hard work. It's just, they're two different kinds of hard work. Uh, like uh, the, right. those change bridge guys, like they do fundamental analysis. And, and that's just amazing to me to, to, to have the insights into the actual operations of the company and being able to make, say like, nope, this company's not, not them. These guys, yeah, these guys. Because yeah, it's just a t total different set of factors. Well, what I found most interesting about that is how they're interested in hearing our take on, on it from a technical analysis standpoint because they've always been fundamental right. analysis type people. Uh, that's one of the things that's been nice about doing this show is just getting exposed to all those different types of thinking. Oh, yeah. Oh, agreed. You know, you got George and Vico who do order flow and technical analysis, and you got the change rich guys who are more fundamental analysis, and you got Dr. Hans who's a buy and hold type investor who's with more of a basis on fundamentals. Uh, yeah, you get to talk to all different people, and most of them successful as far as we know, Re right? Re presumably. I would assume they all are, but yeah, that just goes back to that, you know, the, the number one takeaway for me this past year is that just all comes down to your discipline, discipline and risk management, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Right. It's, it's really the whole name of the game, which brings us to trading psychology. But before we, before we move on to that, uh, the thing that I wrote down that made me laugh and I was like, I definitely, definitely need to say that like when, when I was at that brunch and I was like, oh, I trade futures. Nobody wanted to talk about futures. Nobody had a single iota of interest. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But you know what? The Chicago Mercantile, they, uh, they don't have any naked shorts. It's not a thing. Yeah. Everybody has to place their orders through the CME. You don't have to worry about anyone hiding their shit on dark pools. I like it just because it's more pure. But I also like I like them all, though. I like mm. trading options still, too. And that's another thing that I kind of took away that I thought was very interesting was that studying futures and trying to learn how to trade those has actually made yes. you a better options trader. And not for the reasons that you would think. Like, not because I'm doing a better job of learning how to analyze price structure and all that, because you're seeing it play out in a much faster uh, time frame. So, I mean, it is some of that. But I think the biggest thing is that I got something else to focus on during the day. To where, like, in order to pull my attention away from futures, it has to be a really good mm. trade setup. Oh, I see. So, I've introduced scarcity into my options trading, which is, I think, one of the keys to success. Absolutely. Not taking every setup, trying to pick from the best ones. I still struggle with the anxiety of, if I don't own a call or a put right now, I'm losing out somehow. Right? Like... Mm -hmm. I can't think of the last time, Kyle, and this is sad. This is sad because this is something I need to improve. I can't think of the last time I sold some options contracts at a profit and didn't immediately look for the next one. Like I never sit it down mm -hmm. and be like, okay, well, I'll wait till the market's closed today, analyze some charts and find the next one. No, it's always open the charts. Where's everything at? Where's my, I want to make a move right now. I just, yep. I got to burn that profit I just made. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah. How do you how do you deal with that? Uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, just start doing shares and buy the dip, where it forces me like to, you know, uh, uh, stick to a plan. You know, I've got a list of the stocks that are near mm -hmm. their all time highs and in their charts, and I've got their levels. And if it hits the trigger, then I can do pull the trigger. But if not, then well, you know, got to wait. Sounds like a, a more clear defined plan is what it sounds like. Absolutely. All right, what's, uh, what else is on your list of uh, takeaways for this last uh, year? Trading psychology is critical. Oh, my God, yeah. 
if if you don't have a good grip on it, it doesn't matter how good your fucking plan is. It just doesn't. It's so hard to manage that emotional roller coaster of uh, I'm king of the world. I just made the best trade ever. Uh, to oh my god, how am I going to feed my family? <laughs> what am I doing with my life? <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> They're all going to laugh at me. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I need to go back through. I think for the. For this month, I need to start uh, uh, throwing back in some of the aspects of Richard Friesen's uh, mm -hmm. stuff, especially with like the set score, managing your sensations, emotions, and thoughts, and like taking a physical inventory, a physical, emotional, mental inventory of yourself. Yeah. Before you start the trading day, even before each trade, like, oh, am I making this trade now because I, because it's a good setup, or am I making this trade now because I'm on a rush and I need to feed that emotional satisfaction yeah yeah that's that emotional satisfaction screws me every time mm -hmm. uh, i think a I lot of it. people probably struggle with that yeah well anyone listening struggling with that know you're not alone <laughs> right and and this is why it's good to have people in your life that you can talk to about about your stuff is you know that's the way out of it just bottling it up makes it worse yeah having having our discord i think has been really helpful oh yeah 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 i've uh, a place to share everything to go to for advice and you know what uh, i don't think anybody on our discord has ever thrown any negativity on somebody for like i just lost this money look at this bad trade you know it's well, not I like number one rule of that <laughs> is don't be a dick <laughs> yeah that's our only rule <laughs> don't be a dick right it's nothing but support there and i i myself struggle with trading depression and uh it definitely helps to to have to have people that you can interact with and know you're not al you're not alone in this you know we're, we're all trying mm -hmm. to we're all trying to do the same thing we're, we're, we're like like a team not not competing against each other it's not like if i made fifty dollars a day kyle lost fifty dollars right <laughs> we're not Unless at I'm a poker table <laughs> Sometimes it feels like that, but yeah, it's a good point. We're first starting to get into that, like hearing people tell us that trading is a lonely game and you need, you need those social st structures to, to be able to share with. And I think the biggest reason for that is because your significant other doesn't want to hear it all the time. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> like my wife is learning, uh, you know, reluctantly more about stock trading. I think she does more than she ever thought she would, not because she has any interest in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard Jen say the same thing. I was like, well, another five years, you, you'll be you'll be a pro. All uh, right. Yeah. How much can you just absorb from secondhand trading? <laughs> That's the strategy we need to set up. Eventually, you'd think you, you'd absorb. I know that mm -hmm. uh, personal anecdote. My mother's aunt was a phone operator in the freaking thirties and forties, and mm -hmm. she w would sit and listen. To the people talking with their brokers now mm -hmm. i don't know what level it was insider trading in terms of like she heard somebody say this is gonna do this but i do know that when she died she was very very wealthy from a stock portfolio that she started trading <laughs> based on phone calls that she was uh, listening in on oh god i'd love to have that job in the 30s <laughs> right operator get me harrison four 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 <laughs> by ford I actually think she had uh, AT and T shares. Yeah, is that before it was AT and T when it was like MCI or whatever? Ma Bell, Ma, <laughs> Ma Bell. Yeah, yeah. Go figure. Ah, oh, boy. What else? What else have we learned, Dan? Well, I know I I thought I had a third note card, uh, but I don't see it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's continuing with trading psychology, uh, being so critical. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, Richard Friesen, there are a lot of resources out there that only deal with trading psychology, right? Right. Like, they're not trying to teach you any fundamental analysis or technical analysis or any system. It's, it's just trying to teach you, like, hey, you're a human being. This is how human beings work. <laughs> this is how you can manage your mind and your emotions. And this is how the stock market works based on everybody else doing this. <laughs> like, if we can figure out what drives your emotional, you know, need to trade... Mm -hmm. like where you're getting your satisfactions and like 
uh, like the FOMO, like if, if you could figure out and pinpoint all those for yourself, like uh, you probably just figured out where everybody else is doing. Like if you could be aware of that, like it should do nothing but help inform your trading decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And no matter what the time frame you trade in is, mm-hmm. day day trading, you know, weeks, months, years, the psychology is so much more improved with a with a routine. Oh yeah. Right. A trading you, you like you you trading routine. And and it's crazy is is sports psychology apparently plays a lot. It's the same thing. Hmm. And you think of like a like a baseball player that always maybe I don't know choose the same flavor of gum before every game right i thought that was superstition uh i guess the well to the ball players it is right. but there's some psychology behind it because when you're sitting in the locker room when you put that gum in your mouth there's a textile sensation and a flavor sensation that primes your brain for oh it's time to play baseball right you get the smell of the socks you'd never changed I'm like mm, yep i know what we're doing now <laughs> it's it's exactly exactly it's it's psychologically conditioning yourself like pavlov's dog to have your mouth water when the dinner bell rings mm-hmm. like media, like that that routine works for you yeah and, and it's so it's so important i uh, i have a, a routine that i have listed out that uh if i if i don't follow it in the morning like i don't get to trade Mm-hmm. what's on the routine nothing nothing crazy it's uh i get up in the morning i i walk at least three laps around the five acre property mm-hmm. i take a shower uh i sit for five minutes and and go through in my head what trading is to me and and how i'm going to do that day and try and uh you know, ward off the yeah i shouldn't say ward off you know tr- make it my chewing gum try, try right. and get in and be like okay this is what i'm doing i'm trading i'm looking for market structure I'm looking for confirmation your pregame speech to get you pumped up pregame speech right then i then i say a prayer to hermes <laughs> <laughs> and uh i haven't i haven't finished this yet but i'll tease it the the mormon hymns that were hardwired into my brain from birth the, the children's songs <laughs> oh god i'm gonna yeah. be rewriting them and sing them to myself before i start trading. oh my god <laughs> i don't know maybe i'll start having <laughs> church services about it but it i realize like because you know i complain about it all the time to jen i'll be like god, i got that stupid song stuck in my head from Mormon primary class and and she's like well think about something else well now I'm gonna take it back I'm gonna be like I'm gonna rewrite the words to that and I'm gonna make it my song to help me and that way you know because it, it's in my brain but now I'm uh it's it's empowering me instead of frustrating me <laughs> oh that's awesome <laughs> I got nothing uh, to say about yeah. that. Well, I'm a musical guy, so like, you know, the ones that I liked as a kid, I fucking sung with gusto. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I fucking love this tune. I don't remember any of the songs. Let's do it. Well, I'm not going to sing them. I, I don't know how copyrights go when they're not a parody. <laughs> Can you copyright a hymn? <laughs> oh, the, the, the Mormon ones are. The ones that are specifically Mormon. Are they really? Those are all copyrighted for they are. sure. Oh yeah, and Scientology has their own too. Yeah, but I would actually love that lawsuit. <laughs> right, I, I would love, I would love to rewrite their hymn for trading, and then have them be like, "You can't play that on the air." <laughs> to hell, I can't. It's my <laughs> hymn now. Oh, you shit on my religious expression. Oh God. Okay. All right. Let's move on from the the religious minefield that we're stepping <laughs> we, into. <laughs> off, off the rails a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> my bad. That's all right. It was entertaining. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, I would. Uh, we'll circle back to to like you said. You got to know why you're trading, mm-hmm. and if it's to make money, that's not a good enough reason. Yeah, like we all want to make money. We all it's like it's capitalism. We need money to survive. But well, but if it's you know to take care of your family, that's different than making money. Right. Right. Got to have a good emotional drive. And uh, I like. Uh, I've actually been thinking about putting up pictures of why I'm trading to have that visual reminder the lambo and all the the stuff you want no no no, no not like a bitch vis- <laughs> <laughs> win lambo yeah when do i get the lambo uh, like you know a uh, picture picture of jen cuz i want to i'd love to get to the point where i'm like hey you don't have to work right i just i just print money by logging in and, and trading futures <laughs> it's coming oh man i know sometimes it feels like it's really far away but you got to remember we're only a few months into our futures journey yeah, I was gonna say that kind of leads into the 
the last lesson that I wanted to leave with that I learned, but if you got something you want to say first. Oh, just, just that, like, that's the big realization I had at the brunch was, like, because I still think of myself as, like, this rookie trader. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not profitable live on futures. Like, God damn it! like, whoa, you know, it's easy for me to get down on myself. Uh, but there I am sitting in a room full of people, and, and I'm like, I am literally the most informed person in this room right. about this stuff. <laughs> that is meaningful. That right? really is. Oh, man, uh, you can't really... Yeah, you got to take something positive from that. Not not shitting on anybody no, whatsoever. No, it's not that. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not their fault. It's nothing to do with them. It's not because I'm great, but that's where I'm at. And it's like, wow, okay. Uh, and that actually did motivate me. No, it's just seeing the... F- it, you've seen the fruits of all of the effort that you put into it. And that's yeah one of the key realizations for me. Like when we finally realized that we hit like the one year point and then going back and looking and being like, oh my God, we've come so far in this last year. Oh, yeah. Like if you want to do this, if you want to do this full time, like you have to put in the time. There's no shortcuts. None. You're not going to take a class, jump on the computer and be printing money the next week. Like it's going to be... I know that this doesn't really sell seats or <laughs> sell subscriptions to, for people, but right, it's going to be about a year of, of learning and grinding at it every day. It's a job. If you don't have that kind of passion for it, then you probably won't be successful. Yeah. Do- but, you know, just dollar cost average, stick to those ETFs, those market ETFs, you'll be fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You'll be fine. There's, there's still a path for you if that's not your thing. But if you are, or, or- if you are passionate... <laughs> Uh, Mm -hmm. you know there's free stuff everywhere but you know there's a reason why some stuff's free that's true (laughs) (laughs) i know uh i know some of the costs of some of the things are are kind of prohibitive from wanting to to jump in and believe me i was skeptical and i don't think i ever would have i don't know that i ever would have purchased george's courses without getting a taste of them beforehand yeah that's the type of person i am but my god like uh seeing what i've learned and what i've done since getting access to all that stuff uh, is worth the investment take up your biggest losses right. over the last year and see how much that adds up to and then see if that money wouldn't have been better spent on you know some professional education absolutely because there's not very many places you can go to get that and yeah there's a lot of free stuff on the internet there's also a lot of stupid shit on the internet <laughs> it makes it really hard to differentiate when you don't know what you're looking at Yes, yes. Oh, and I've seen, I've come across some some really uh, I don't know in the dregs of of YouTube some really questionable stuff. Well, anytime you see a, just the the headline that says like this is all the money you need in order to live off of dividends for the rest of your life, uh, this one trick can trade and change uh, you know take a small account of five hundred to three hundred fifty thousand. Like yeah, that all looks good on paper. That appeals to people's greed, but that's not you're not going to be successful trying to follow something like that. Yeah, and and I think that's my rule of thumb, generally speaking, when I come across the stuff online now is like, are they trying to appeal to my greed? If so, I'm out. Yeah. You got to find... Um, what was it? It doesn't have to be... The last financial advisor we had. Yeah, Matt Matt Reiner. Yeah, Matt, Matt Reiner. That's Matt what Reiner? he said. If you walk into a financial advisor's office and they're like, I'm going to make you this much money, he's like, walk right out. Yeah. And I feel like it's the same thing for if you're, find, if you're trying to find education online. You got to find somebody who cares, who cares about the people that he's trying to get back to. Those are the ones who are successful and can actually teach you something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. we lucked out finding George, but it doesn't have to be George. You know, just find someone who cares about you, that you're not a product. Uh, let me give you the number to scam and dance financial plans. Uh, are we starting that? <laughs> <laughs> because I care. No, uh, I don't start that because I do care. I'd rather talk about my own losses and and our journey Mm -hmm. than to try and scam people george said uh when i think we were talking to him about when he first started trade pro he spent how many years talking to the same like three people he said i think he said like four two two years two to four years yeah something like that that's a guy who cares (laughs) (laughs) you gotta really care yeah god and how what i would have given to be one of those fucking first three people can you imagine (laughs) the hands-on attention you would have (laughs) gotten Oh yeah, right. It's personal. <laughs> be over there for Thanksgiving. Coaching lesson every day. <laughs> You'd be buying you Christmas presents. You'd be such good friends, right? <laughs> this kid's gonna call you Uncle Kyle. I know. Be the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right. Mm-hmm. You got anything? Uh, anything else you want to touch on here? Things I learned in the past year. Yeah, meme stocks are powerful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Many different ways. Meme stocks are powerful, and 
most professionals stay away from them. Mm -hmm. Not all, but most that we've run into, they're like, oh, yeah, I don't want to go near the meme stuff. Well, they're unpredictable. It's kind of like the same thing with yeah. like an IPO or trading earnings. Like if you have an edge by knowing where, you know, the supports and resistances are going to be, where buyers are going to be interested and where sellers are going to get off the train, why would you want to complicate that with something that trumps technical analysis? Yeah, right. <laughs> I was just going to close with like, if you're, if you're struggling, if you're having trouble, like, don't be afraid to take a break Yeah, and just observe for a little bit. I think that's one of the best things you can do for yourself. Yep. And I think I've recently done it. You've recently done it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> and, and, you know, obviously we, we push our discord server cause that's where we're at, but find there's there's so many forums like ask questions and if if you don't feel like the question got answered like rephrase it like people the the people that we've talked to that care want to answer every question they can as honestly as they can like people do want to help each other out there it's almost like a need to give back like i think the people who are yep. really successful want to try to help other people realize that goal yep because yeah if you can just flip on the computer and print money you know, you need something else to drive you. <laughs> There's something else to right. feel satisfaction. You'll, yeah. yeah, you'll hit a point where you're like, okay, I need more than just this. Most people yeah. will, I think. I think so. Um, and if you're listening and you, that's where you're at, come share your knowledge with people. Help yeah, get back. come share with us. <laughs> We'd love to yeah. talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, my crypto account did go up 15% in the last two days. So I'm oh. doing something right. Nice. I think I had almost doubled mine. Oh, um, I'm nowhere near. I haven't even made up for the losses. I think, well, yeah, I started well before you did. Yeah, I think when you buy oh. crypto, initially you have to weather a 50% drop first. <laughs> and then average back in. <laughs> I didn't even average back in. It just came back. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Although I had been, I just take from the top. Anything that's up at the peaks, just redistribute something that's low. Make it sound so fucking easy. That seems to work pretty well. Oh, it's easy when there's like hardly anything in there. Yeah. I says, I guess my parting thought is just uh, doubling down on like the trading for me. The trading psychology yeah. is is the mountain to climb. Um, it really is. Like the the knowledge to learn. If you even if you sit down, and you can only put a couple hours a week into learning a new thing. Like you'll be there in a few months. You know, mm -hmm. you, you'll, you can learn the knowledge of whichever you want to do technicals or fundamental, uh, you, you'll get there. Uh, but once you're there, it becomes this f battle with yourself. You almost have to go back. <laughs> that, that market euphoria and despair. Yeah. yeah you almost, yeah, it's, it's so real and it's, it's hard to. You have to go back and re revisit those previous lessons that you've spent so hard learning just to reinforce mm -hmm. them sometimes because you start to get away from them if you're not careful. Yes, indeed. All right. Shall we, uh, shall we put a bow on it? I think so. That's enough. Soul searching. Well, folks, lovey -dovey, feely -feely. <laughs> <laughs> folks, we love you and we love that you love us. Thank you so much. We're so grateful that you all joined us today. We'd like to close by singing a hymn. <laughs> Thou shalt never, Never give up profit. I shall never That's... abandon the two bulls discord. Oh. <laughs> I was just no. say no. You, you yeah. Don't don't. He, thou shalt always take some profit. That's that's what I should say. Uh, there you go. For the love of God, <laughs> when your shit is up, take some goddamn profit. <laughs> God, what was that South Park oh, right. where Cartman was retaking all the Jesus songs and then <laughs> or just taking regular hits and turn, putting Jesus in there? I want to get down on my knees and please Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, never mind. Oh, Take that out. Okay. That out. <laughs> and on that note, folks, thanks for getting to the end of the show with us. Uh, we are really, truly grateful uh, to have everybody uh, as part of the China shop as, as we do. And uh, we, we just have such a good time doing this stuff. Yeah. And we hope you do, too. Thanks to everyone who shares with us, too. No, it's not easy to put those losses out there. Yeah, special shout out to everybody sharing stuff. Yeah. We, we appreciate uh, that openness and the honesty because that's, that's how we can all get better. Yep. Uh, so stay tuned. 
see you uh, next episode coming out. We'll talk about bet results. And uh, until then, Ooh. happy trades. Bye. Two Bulls in a China Shop is an entertainment program, and all thoughts and opinions expressed in the show belong to the hosts and not of any company. They are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security or investment product. It is only intended to provide entertainment about stocks and the financial industry of trading. If you make trades based on what you hear in this show, you assume all risks for those trades.